Colonel Mike Fossum and the crew of Discovery, we thank you very much for joining us. Colonel, how was the trip up into orbit this time compared to your last trip, and how are you all adjusting? Uh, the trip up was awesome. It was just a flawless countdown. The vehicle was really clean coming through all the work at, at Kennedy Space Center. And uh, we just walked out and did it just like we practiced. Next thing you know, the Gs are building more than they do in the simulator, and we're in orbit. Colonel, I know the missions are very different, but how did your first ride on Discovery prepare you for this trip? Well, in a lot of ways, yeah, there are differences in the mission, but the, uh, you know, the ride up was not a surprise, and getting used to uh, working in zero gravity it's always a little bit of a surprise when uh, nothing stays put, and it uh, takes a whole lot more effort just to work with things. Uh, but, you know, I just mentally prepared, knew what we were getting into, and have a, just a great crew, and everybody's jumping, to, uh, jumping in there, and we're running ahead of our timeline right now. This Japanese lab, Kibo, that you'll be working on, Colonel, how complex is the installation process? There's, there's some steps. We'll start the, uh, the first of our installation steps on the fourth day of the flight with a spacewalk to go out and remove some covers. Uh, and then it's a lot of robotic operations to remove the, uh, the, the lab from the pillow bay of the shuttle and move it over to, and install it on the station. And then we'll go back outside on uh, one, a good part of a second spacewalk and even part of a third to finish up things. But it's, uh, the Kibo module is beautiful. It's a, just a, a beautiful piece of engineering and a whole lot of pride there. The uh, Japanese people are very proud of that and they have a right to be. And Colonel, I think everyone wants to know who gets to fix the toilet on the space station. Well, I could make a joke about it, but the fact is that the uh, the, uh, the toilet is a Russian hardware, and we've, uh, have, we're bringing up parts from Russia and be handing that over to the space station crew. I guess if they need a hand bending some wrenches, we may help out, but mostly that won't, uh, won't be our main business. Colonel, we went out and we got some questions from some local elementary school students. We're hoping you can answer them. The first one is from Jacqueline. What kind of food do y'all take in space? Jacqueline, good question. What kind of food do we take into space? Well, this morning for breakfast, I had some uh, granola with blueberries and uh, part of a bagel. For lunch, I had some uh, tuna salad on, uh, on tortillas and an apple. And so, you know, and sometimes the food is kind of similar. Other times I had, we have, you know, dehydrated food like you might have for camping. Some of it's not exactly like you eat at home, but it's all pretty good. And uh, the hungrier you get, the better it tastes. Our next question is from Kelsey. What made you want to be an astronaut? Hey Kelsey, I've wanted to be an astronaut since I was a, about 12 years old watching the early space missions and I just would, would dream about, about that kind of crazy thing and one day I said, you know, I want to do that too. And uh, there were a lot of twists and turns along the way but I never gave up on that crazy dream and I'm pretty glad I didn't. We have another question from Jackson. What's your job on the space station? Hey Jackson, my job, my main job on this mission is uh, taking care of the spacewalks. Ron Garen and I will be going outside three times to do spacewalks to uh, help out with the installation of the uh, Japanese laboratory and fix a couple of things on the space station. Other than that, for the ride uphill, for all the training that the uh, commander and the rest of the crew had, uh, my main job is keeping an eye on the food lockers. I want to bring in Commander Mark Kelly real quick. Sir, you flew with Colonel Fossum on Discovery the last time. Has he enlightened you and the crew about Aggie traditions, and how much Aggie talk are we expecting out of him? You have no idea. <laughs> We, we went through Aggiedom on STS-121 that launched a couple years ago, and uh, it's starting already. Colonel, I'm assuming you've peeked out a window and looked down on Texas a few times. When you look at Aggieland from your vantage point, what goes through your mind? Uh, to me, it looks like home. You, one of the main landmarks to find it is the Brazos River uh, just outside of town. 
And, uh, you know, it, looking at Texas and, and Aggieland out there, and it uh, just looks like home. Brings back a lot of memories. And actually, uh, just a few days before we went into quarantine, I, uh, I took a drive up to campus, and I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody while I was up there. I just kind of drove up to the campus, and I took a walk around, and then uh, came back to Houston, and the next day we went into quarantine. Before we let you go really quickly, what is your message to young people in the Brasses Valley? You've spoken to them many times based on your journey from McAllen to Aggieland and now to where you are. There's no dream that's too crazy to reach for. If you can dream it, you can achieve it, and uh, you're going to become a better person for the try -in. So you just got to go for it. Colonel Mike Fossum and the crew of Discovery, we thank you so much for your time. Good luck on the mission and gig'em.